Good afternoon, welcome to Salt Fix. Uh, find nothing cures those Monday feelings like getting out straight after work. It just makes the day go a lot faster when you know you're gonna actually go out fishing in the afternoon. So that's exactly what I've done. I've been watching the wind all day. The easterly is kind of, I don't know, it's pretty strong. Sort of just white capping behind me there. I've headed out a bit. I'm just about to anchor up. I'm in 15 meters. I don't know if you can see that. 16 meters. I think it drops down to about 17, just over here somewhere. Maybe. 16.8, 16.9, 17. So there's just like a bit of a ledge there. There's not much, bit of fluff on the bottom. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna turn around. 18 and then it runs out 19 20 and out onto the sand behind so what i'm going to do now is turn around just going to spin back around straight into the wind um drop my pick up wind a little bit and then barely back onto that side a little bit of a little bit of a ledge there it's not much only a couple of meters i don't know i've never fished here before it's a new spot so we'll see how we go Maybe it's going to be good, maybe it won't be, I don't know. Well, there's a bit of fluff on the bottom there, I don't know if you can see that. So I'll just power up a little bit, back into probably the 16s. Where I am pretty much now, and then I'm going to jump up and chuck the anchor down. Right, so the pig's down, and the wind's sort of blowing me backwards. Just got to wait for that anchor to grab and the boat will swing and hopefully I'll swing and be sitting sort of right on the edge of where that 16, 17 metre sort of ledge was. I'm on 17, sort of 18 now. And the boat swings. 17s. So I'm sitting there. All right, so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to run you through probably my top three favourite soft plastics and um, I'm going to fish with those different soft plastics out the back and see which one works um, there's every chance that neither of them are working I'll get nothing but either way I'll um, show you which ones I like the best anyway so starting with number one is this boy right here it's the uh, Abrolis five inch bull whip um, I'm not sure what they call this it's like the pearl glue color I guess the five inch I run on a one eighth it's a one eighth TT head and I find the sink rate is just so slow, especially at anchor. It sinks like almost neutrally. It sinks really slow and just spends a lot of time in the strike zone, sort of sinking from, um, you know, sinking from the top down through the mid water column to the bottom. It takes, you know, sometimes up to a minute to get to the bottom. And if the boat's really rocking, which it's kind of rocking around a bit today, every time the boat rocks it jerks it back up again and jerks it back up and sometimes it might not even make the bottom it just sort of hovers mid-water and just works this way it jerks up and then falls slowly and then jerks up and falls slowly and i find you don't even have to work it um these abrolis are just really good the other good thing about them is it's really hard to do this and hold the camera but they're super tough super stretchy you can catch multiple fish on them and they last and last and last so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this one out and then I'll get the other one sorted out. So my, <clears throat> my second, probably my second favourite soft plastic is the Berkeley Powerbait Nemesis. That's your boy there. Um, they're pretty tough as well. They last pretty good. Again, I'm fishing this on the one eighth head. Um, I'm at anchor. I'm at anchor now. So the one eighth heads just, again, just gives it that really slow fall rate. Spends a lot of time in mid water. The beauty of this one is this big curly tail. When it's falling, dropping, twitching, whatever, that big curly tail's just swapping around there down in the current. Um, snapper really like it. Again, in this pearl glow colour, I just really like that colour, I don't know. It's whatever works for you. I think whatever the fisherman likes is what he's going to use the most and probably what's going to catch the most. So I like the white. I think it stands out. It gives a really good profile, even in the dark waters or wherever. It just sort of stands out and gives a good profile for itself. That's why I use the white. So I'm going to do is cast that. Actually, I'm going to bring this one in. Bring that one in a little bit. So what I try to do is I try to cast a fish in. I'm going to fish two here. I'll try to cast one out and then I'll let that sink and then I'll cast the other one out, let that sink and then I'll grab this one, wind that in, twitch it in, 
cast it, let it sink, twitch this one, cast it, let it sink, and just sort of alternate between the two. Um, I think I'm being a bit ambitious by showing you the third one. So I'll probably just stay with two for now, but let me cast this one out and then I'll talk about the third one. So my third favorite soft plastic, um, turns out I haven't even got one, or maybe I have, oh, I've only got the short one, is the gulp. Seven inch gulp. I think they're just called whip baits or I'm pretty sure they're just a whip bait. A seven inch gulp in the nuclear chicken. Um, the nuclear chicken, I don't know why, it just seems to be a really good color. And gulps, if you've never fished soft plastics before, gulps is the ideal place to start. Um, they're kind of like bait. They stink to high heaven. I've actually used them cut up into little cubes and fished them for skippy and herring and they work exactly like bait. So they don't necessarily have to be used. Twitch, you can pretty much fish them like bait. So if you haven't got confidence in soft plastics and you just want to try them out, I'd say go with gulps. They're always a good, um, a good option to get into it because they catch fish and they work really well and it'll get your confidence up in the use of soft plastics. I'm not going to put a third one out because the way the boats swing, I think it's going to be a handful and it'll be more than I can handle. So I'm just going to fish these two, just alternate between them and hopefully I can get a fish. And um, I don't know, we'll see which one comes up trumps or maybe none of them will. So when I cast out, what I try to do is I try to do a cast um, roughly the depth of the water. So I'm sitting in 17 metres of water here. I'll try to do a cast around 17, 18 metres. So it goes out, swings down all the way through the water column and then it'll hit the bottom, sort of somewhere near the bottom of the boat here. Um, ideally when I see the line start to go straight up and down, I know it's getting near the bottom and I know it's time to wind it in and twitch it back in, twitch it back up again. So this one here is getting close to the bottom, so I'm going to sort that out now before it snags. So while I'm fishing here, it's going to be a handful, but I'll run you through the, um, the outfits I'm using here. This outfit is the Daiwa Sertate. Um, it's only a small one, this one. It's more of a more of a brim style reel. I think it's called a 2850 or something. It was a special a special reel that Dollar brought out. So they called it a finesse series reel. It's got a really shallow spool. Um, it's a bit of a pain, really. If I had realised when I when I got it, I probably wouldn't have got it because the shallow spool was a bit of a pain. You can't really feel a lot of line on it. So what I run on here is gliss. It's really, really thin and I can manage to get a 300 meter spool of gliss on here. I think that's 15 pound I got on there now. I just changed it the other day. So if I run really thin line like gliss, it, it'll fit 300 meters on, which is more than enough. 15 pound is sometimes a little underdone for snapper, but I still manage to land most of them. You lose some, you win some, it's just the way it goes. So that's just fished on a Daiwa dreadback rod. That's about a 15 pound sort of rod as well. Um, just a really good combination really light um, just really easy to use really you know one-handed it's really light really smooth perfect for twitching soft plastics back through the back through the um, trail or over the reef or whatever, however you're gonna do it so the other combo I'm running here is I'm gonna wind this in because it's getting near the bottom I know what I'll do I'll do this so this is a Daiwa generation black 4000 this one's running 20 pound line on it um, this is probably a little bit more substantial. I use this more for my bait reel, fishing for bigger snapper and so forth. Um, Generation Black, beautiful. I only got this last year around. I've had it for about a year. The other series I've had for seven years now, it's still smooth as the day I got it. Beautiful reels. I just like the divers, I don't know. Shimano's just as nice. I just, I've got divers, so that's what I'm using. I've got no real preference either way. I've had Abu, I've had Pen. Um, there's plenty of nice reels. It's whatever your preference is, is what you like. But yeah, this Daiwa Gen Black's a really nice reel. Got a really nice smooth drag. Good, strong handles. I like the Daiwa. They've just got this really big cranking, winching handles. When you're trying to winch down on a big fish, they come in really good. This is fished on an air, Daiwa Air Rod. It's like a seven foot. Um, I think it's a six to eight kilo. Seven foot rod. Um, Sort of nice and twit, nice and um, stiff in the tip, but plenty of power down low so you can put the herd on a fish if you need to. Again, perfect for um, fishing soft plastics for snapper. Probably just a little bit heavier than the other one and just a little bit more easy to put some herd on a decent fish if you get it. This other one here is just a little on the light side. If you have to try to turn a big snapper, 
I'm going to have to alternate like this. If you have to tan a big snapper with this one, you kind of got your hands full because it just doesn't have the same pulling power. But in its defense, because it's light and it's kind of like a finesse sort of setup, it does tend to hook the fish just as pretty well too. So I'm only fishing a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader on this one and 15 pound gliss. So yeah, like I say, it's pretty light. But snapper are normally pretty tidy. They don't fight too crazy into the rocks or you know do anything silly like that. Snapper are normally pretty, pretty um, decent fighters, pretty clean about the whole thing. If you're chasing sambos, if you're chasing sambos or something like that, it might be a different story. But for snapper, this one gets done. Um, for sambos, even that one's not big enough. I'll just show you how slow the sink rate is on these. TT heads. Get over here. See how slow the sink rate is? Sort of takes two seconds to cover a meter of water. Just that real slow, real slow sink rate with that tail just twitching everywhere on the nemesis. It's just uh, if a snapper swims past and sees that, they can't help themselves. And that slow sink rate just keeps it sort of mid water, keeps it wafting down, keeps it really visible. Here we go. All right, here we go. I turned around for a second to get a biscuit out of my console and the abrolis is gone. This is a snapper. I'm gonna back the drag off a little bit. Well, oh, could be a decent fish too. Feels half decent. So there you go. Like I wasn't even working that. That was basically just falling through the water column. I'd just given that a few twitches and established that it wasn't on the bottom. Thought oh, I'll give it another 10 20 seconds to sink further while I grab a biscuit, turned around, and it's hooked up straight away like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a snapper, by the way, it's doing those big head juggles. Oh, and now it's happened. <laughs> All right, now I've got a double hook up. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm I'm actually going to leave this one because I've got 20 pound on that one and I'm pretty sure that's safe. So I'm going to leave that one. Oh, I think he might be gone anyway. I'm just going to concentrate on this one. No, he's still there. Wow. So there you go. If it's a competition to which plastic works the best, it just goes to show you they both work. And it doesn't really matter which ones you put out. They all worked at the end of the day. Um, like I said before, it's whatever you're confident in is what you're going to use and that's going to be the one that catches the most fish generally um, snapper are pretty hungry fish if they come through your if they come by oh yeah if they're hungry and they see your lure they will generally eat it that's just kind of the way kind of fish they are oh this one as you can see what I'm talking about now on 15 pounds they actually take a bit of doing they go pretty hard on 15. You just can't dictate terms to them. If they put their head down and they want to go, and that's exactly what happens. Oh, once it puts its heads down and it wants to go, that's exactly what it's going to do. I don't like where this one's going to, it's going up to the anchor. I'll try and get him out from underneath the plate here. Come on, buddy. Oh. I knew this was going to happen, that's why I didn't put a third one out. Well, I didn't know it was going to happen, I hoped it was going to happen. The third one just would have been chaotic. Oh, this guy's gone on the side. Oh, right, right, right. Come out of there, mate. Come out of there, mate. Solid fish, this one. Oh, I can feel the anchor rope. Right. Yeah, this one's a solid fish. I'm gonna back this drag off. 
I can get him under the boat and get him on the other side so I can deal with him. Off on that one, let's see if I can land this one if it's still there. Is it still there? No, this one's gone. Oh, I don't like that at all, it just doesn't feel good. losing both fish He's not a snapper anyway, he's a sambo. Oh, I can't believe that held. Woo! I'm bugging. So he's only a little guy. He's only a little guy, but look at him. He's got that abrolus tackle jig right in his mouth he was actually around the around the anchor rope twice there um, I can't believe that 15 pound line didn't ping to be honest with you but there he is I got him the other one got off but I'm pretty oh look at that the jig just fell out of his mouth too I'm pretty happy to land him he's cool he's going back while he's still fresh and let's see what I can get another one So now I don't know if that line's been compromised or what the story is. It's pulled pretty hard around that rope that whole time, but it's held on, so I'm gonna chuck it back out. Oh, you know what, I'm not. I'm gonna bring this one in. I'm gonna bring this one in until I got some time to have a look at the line. Nothing worse than losing the fish. Um, sun's just going down. This is pretty much prime time right now, so I'm just gonna whack out a Work out a half a muley while I'm here. Because if I can get myself a pinky for dinner, that'll be an extra bonus. Oh, 
I'm bugged. I knew that was a bigger than average. If it was a pinky, I knew it was a big one by the way it was fighting. But there you go, a sambo, eh? Up around the boat, around the anchor rope. Made a right pain of itself. Oh, well, that was a mission. Under the anchor, around the anchor, under the motor, up to the front, nearly fell in. But I got him in the end. Thank goodness. Oh, it seems like I'm in. Yoo-hoo-hoo! Oh no, dropped him. Oh no, again. Alright, as you can see, look at that. That's the downside, the one downside to these Berkeley Nemesis is they tend to grab the tail. They tend to grab the tail right down here and miss the hook. So they'll grab the tail, run with it a bit and miss the hook because the hook's a fair way up. So it can happen, but sometimes they'll grab it properly and I'm in on this other rod now. All right. Oh, and that one's gone as well. Oh my God, I can't land a fish for trying today. Well, that's a lie actually, because I just landed one, but. Oh, no shortage of shots at it, that's for sure. That's what, one, two, three, three dropped fish now. Did you even fish, Scotty? I'm sure if, sure if Jack was here, he would have had about bloody three snapper and a jute fish on board by now. Give me a total lesson like he generally does. Yep. Here we go. Another one. Hopefully I, can, well, hopefully I can stay connected to this one. I got my drag down up pretty tight there, in case you're wondering. I'm not even going to call this one because the last one I called for a pinky because of its head shakes. It turned out it wasn't a pinky at all, it was a sand boat. <laughs> and then it made a mockery out of me by going up around the anchor rope. So this one I'm not even going to call. It's not a huge fish, it's probably a smallish pink. Yeah, it's a small pink. Like that, he's beautiful. I wonder what size he got. He's 45 centimeters, so he's just a bit under, but beautiful fish, all the same. He can go back. Thanks for that. Oh, yeah, one more cast, one more cast, one more cast. It's a school night, I probably should be heading back, but you know. Pass this one out while I sort myself out, get the belly pond empty. tonight. I'm here on my hand solo. This one's a pinky. I'm calling this one for a pinky. Again, not huge. Oh no, my other line's getting hits as well now. Get another double hook up. That'll be trouble. This 
one's not huge. This one could be dinner actually. Oh yeah, here's a good size for dinner. Perfect. There's my neck. So here goes 54, that one. Um, get back in the boat, back in the boat. 54 centimetres, that one. He's perfect. He's going home for dinner. And on that note, I'm probably going to get out of here. Um, I'll sort this guy out, get him on ice, and now I'm going to pack up. Well, there you go. That's it for me tonight. That was a uh, pretty hectic little session actually for a Monday night. I'm pretty happy. It's only just gone quarter to six. Um, I'm heading in now before the sun goes slowly down. There was a lot of pots on the way out here earlier on, so I don't want to run into a pot in the dark. Even though I've got a spotlight, they're still pretty hard to see sometimes. So that was um, how I fish soft plastics at anchor. Obviously that was pretty successful. I'll make an effort to try and show you guys how to fish soft plastics um, drifting, but it's just really hard to get the right conditions. It's always blowing and when it's windy you drift too fast and it's really hard. Obviously you've got to use a bit heavier jig heads and stuff than what I'm using but it's still doable on drift but I don't know, the anchor barely technique just seems way more effective to me so that's why we do it that way. But if you like our stuff, stay tuned, um, subscribe, hit the like button, any questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next episode. Yeah!